They say knowledge is power. Knowledge gives you the power and confidence to lead a successful life. How do we get the knowledge? We have to seek information. Information about the current affairs. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with, the main points in a nutshell. Merkel defends compromise deal on Eurozone banks. Colorado wildfires. President Obama declares disaster. Researchers use spoofing to hack into a flying drone. Egypt President-elect Mohamed Morsi hails Tahrir crowds. China's Zhengzhou 9 spacecraft returns to Earth. India floods. Many thousands flee homes in Assam. And now the news in detail. Merkel defense compromise deal on Eurozone banks. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel says she is satisfied with the deal to help finance debt-laden Eurozone countries. I think we found a good compromise, she said after all-night talks which saw her come under heavy pressure from Italy and Spain. A new supervisory body will enable the European Central Bank ECB to keep a very close eye on the banks, she said. Spain is awaiting a 100 billion euro recapitalization of its troubled bank by Eurozone. Mrs. Merkel said the deal on lending would provide sufficient safeguards for the taxpayers' money used by the European Union bailout funds. The European Union Existing Bailout Fund, the European Union Financial Stability Facility, will provide aid under the current rules until new permanent fund, the European Stability Mechanism, ESM, is ready to take over. The ESM is due to be launched next month. The funds will not only be able to lend directly to banks, they will also be used to buy bonds, countries like Italy and Spain whose borrowing costs have sowed with the intention that those countries will now have to apply for a formal Greek-style bailout. Eurozone leaders agreed to begin implementing the decisions by 9th July. However, it could take until the end of the year before the new money becomes available. Germany, the biggest economic power in the Eurozone, is reluctant to continue bailing out debt-laden countries. Its position is supported by the Netherlands, Austria and Finland. Announcing the deal, European Union Council President Hermann von Rompuy said he would break the vicious circle between the banks and national governments. The euro surged against other currencies while European stock markets also rose sharply. During Friday afternoon trading, the main German-French market were up 3.5%, while in London, the FTSE 100 rose 1.8%. U.S. markets also rose significantly on the opening. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 1.5% in early trading. Colorado wildfire President Obama declares disaster. U.S. President Barack Obama has issued a disaster declaration for Colorado, where wildfires have forced tens of thousands of from their homes. The move paves the way for access to federal funds to combat the blaze and comes just hours before Mr. Obama is due to visit the state. Police said a body had been found in a burnout home in Colorado Springs. The Waldo Canyon fire has destroyed 346 houses, making the most destructive in the state's history. Another blaze in northern Colorado, the High Park fire, has killed one person and has destroyed 257 homes, officials have said. Officials say progress has been aided by improved weather conditions, but the Forest Service has warned that it could still take weeks to get wildfires under control. Half of America's firefighting resources, some 1,100 personnel, have been deployed in the state where nearly 1,60,000 acres have been raised. 
The Waldo Canyon Fire is threatening Colorado Springs, the state's second biggest city and home to 420,000 people. Meanwhile, some of the more than 30,000 people who fled the flames in the city on Tuesday night have been told they can return. Late on Thursday, Police Chief Pete Carey said remains of a person were found in a garden house in the city. He said the body was one of the two people reported missing from that address, but did not give further details. Officials on Thursday said the fire was halted before it reached the academy for U.S. Air Force cadets. It had been evacuated, but residents were allowed to return on Friday morning. The authorities informed those who had lost homes on Thursday, some had already been able to tell their houses had survived from the aerial photos, which showed rows of buildings reduced to ashes. Our minds just started sifting through all the memories of that house that we lost that can't be replaced, Resident Rebecca Largen said after learning from it lists distributed by the authorities that her house has been among those destroyed. Colorado Springs Mayor Steve Mark said it would be a difficult time for those affected. This community is going to be surrounded with the love and encouragement, Mr. Box said, according to the Associated Press News Agency. Researchers use spoofing to hack into a flying drone. American researchers took control of a flying drone by hacking into its GPS system, acting on dollars 1,000 dare from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS. A uh, University of Texas Austin team used spoofing, a technique where the drone mistakes a signal from hackers for the one sent from the GPS satellite. The same method may have been used to bring down a U.S. drone in Iran in 2011. Analysts say the demo shows a potential danger of using drones. Drones are unmanned aircraft often controlled by a hub located thousands of kilometers away. They are mostly used by military in conflict zones such as Afghanistan. Todd Humphreys and his colleagues from Radio Navigation Lab at the University of Texas at Austin hacked the GPS system of a drone belonging to the university. They demonstrated the technique to DHS officials using a mini helicopter drone flown over the stadium in Austin, said Fox News, who broke the story. The spoof drone used an unencrypted GPS signal, which is normally used by civilian planes, says Noel Sharkey, co-founder of the International Committee for Robot Arms Control. It's easy to spoof an unencrypted drone. Anybody technically skilled could do this. It would cost them some rupees 50,000 for the equipment, and that's it, he told reporters. It's very dangerous. If a drone is being directed somewhere using its GPS, a spoofer can make it think it's somewhere else and make it crash into a building, or crash somewhere else, or just steal it and fill it with explosives and direct somewhere else. But the big worry is it almost means that it wouldn't be too hard for a very skilled man to work out how to unencrypt military drones and spoof them. And that could be extremely dangerous because they could turn them on the wrong people.